In uh, 1999, I wrote a play called Blood on the Moon, which involved the trial of James Patrick Whelan for the assassination of Thomas Darcy McGee. I get asked all the time, was he guilty or was he not guilty? And the play itself doesn't really answer the question, because we don't know. I do know one thing, he didn't receive a fair trial. The sufferings of the unhappy people of Ireland at the hands of the heartless, bigoted, despotic British government are well known. Irish are born and bred in slavery. They know not what freedom is. Thomas Darcy, a traitor to the British government. As the first ever colony of the empire, the Irish are treated as slaves to the British. When the blight attacks the potato crop, Millions of Irish are on the verge of starvation. The cries of the dying go unanswered by the British, who refuse to extend aid. They are helpless as they watch what meager food they do have be exported to Britain. Famine, pale, gaunt, ghastly, is walking throughout Ireland, consuming millions of human beings with the breath of his mouth. Any Englishman is welcome to say what he likes. But if a poor, starved Irishman dares lift his voice in favour of Irish liberty, he will find himself drawn and quartered. Patrick James Whelan A starving people demand the freedom to feed itself, to practice its religion, and to speak its own language. Men like Thomas Darcy McGee and Patrick Whelan joined the ranks of the Fenian Brotherhood and Young Ireland Movement. Each group has roots as far back as the 1798 rebellion in the fight for Irish liberty. But the brutality of the British army denies any success for the radicals. The Irish flee their stricken homeland on disease-ridden vessels bound for Canada. There is not an Irishman who left who didn't become a poet, who did not write something about how he missed sweet Erin, his homeland. O oh, dread Lord of heaven and earth, how hard and sad it is to go from the land which I loved and cherished to outward gloom and woe. Thomas Darcy McGee For some, Canada means a chance for a new beginning. For others, it does not relieve the burden of bitter memories. Ottawa becomes a refuge to McGee Whelan and thousands of other Irish immigrants. But you have to remember, in 1868, this place was a dump. It was a brothel, uh, it was lumberjacks and Irish workers. And they all mixed together in this volatile pot. In the Irish community, 
factions remain, each with a differing view on the future of the Irish nation. What separated McGee and Whelan finally was that McGee's idea when he came to Canada was that why are we bringing in these struggles? Why are we importing these, uh, these old arguments? Um, um, now he believed we could start anew as it were. Patrick Whelan carries the centuries of brutal oppression close to his heart. He envisions an Ireland free of the British occupation. He is not alone. The nationalists mass around a group called the Fenians. The plan is intent on seizing Ireland from British control. The Fenians had this grand ambition of invading Canada, holding it hostage for Irish independence. And that excited people like um, Whelan and frightened people like McGee. A journalist by trade and an orator at heart, Thomas Darcy McGee carves a space for himself in politics. Of his time as an Irish rebel, McGee laughs. The follies of one in 20, he says. So McGee, here he is, he's a member of parliament, he lives on uh, Spark Street, he's a fairly well-off guy in comparison. And then we've got James Patrick Whelan, who lives on the other side of town, in Lower Town, um, is a tailor, doesn't make a lot of money. A rebel becomes a founding father. McGee will no longer agitate for Irish nationalism. And this caused a great deal of upset amongst the Fenians, who figured that McGee was now a turncoat. Traitor. Traitor. Traitor! They have no right to intrude their Irish patriotism on this soil, McGee proclaims in a public speech. The Fenians are a foreign disease, their presence akin to political leprosy. Secret societies like these are like scotch grass. They need to be pulled out by the roots and burned. As for Fenianism, I strangled it when it first attempted to concentrate in Canada. I am not now going to be annoyed by the odor of its carcass. McGee is murdered. A bullet to the back of the head. Rumors grip the nation. Might this be the first volley in a Fenian invasion of Canada? There is fear that the young federation might not be able to defend itself. Virtually every Irish Catholic male was under suspicion. Fingers started pointing all around and then till one, finally a few fingers ended up pointing at James Patrick Whelan. I am innocent. I never took that man's blood. Police showed up at his rooming house. They found a uh, 38 caliber handgun, a Smith & Wesson. It had obviously been recently fired at least once. And on this circumstantial evidence, they brought him in. I am held to be a black assassin, but I am innocent. Wearing a small green rosette, Whelan enters the courtroom. To the press, the tailor with the red whiskers represents all the fears and hatred the young nation has for the Fenians. So on the night that McGee was assassinated, James Patrick Whelan was seen in the gallery of the House of Commons, and during a particularly fiery speech by McGee, Whelan was seen to stand up and point his finger like this at McGee and then exit. And that was the last time he was seen before, uh, before he was arrested. 
The prosecution was looking for a conviction, but that doesn't mean that Whelan did not have his defenders. In fact, most Irish Catholics felt that Whelan was innocent, still do to that matter. Uh, but you have to understand, again, there was a great fear um, of invasion, and so people wanted all of this to be completed very quickly. An implied threat. A recently fired pistol. A reputation. And the testimony of a man said to have been paid off by the prosecution. Now James Patrick Whelan feels he, he didn't do this, knows he didn't do this, or says he didn't do this. They got to find me guilty yet. Guilty! You'll be hanged by the neck until your body is dead, Mr. Whelan. And may God have mercy on your soul. Of all things this court says I am, the only truth is that I am Irish. That seems enough to condemn a man to a long walk to the gallows. 20,000 people flood the streets of Montreal to mourn McGee. Five thousand take to the streets of Ottawa to watch Whelan die. So what I've tried to do in my play is to give Whelan the opportunity to defend himself that he didn't get in 1868. Now, whether he's lying or not, well, I'll leave that up to the, the viewer. God save Ireland. And God save my soul. <laughs>